guys, it's Sim and this is Wrestling Unlimited as we are here on the 8th of June 2022 to talk about everything that went down tonight on AEW Dynamite. The Dynamite started really strong, a couple good things in the middle, and then ended really strong. Some of that in the middle, kind of just all right. So, I mean, of course, not as strong of a show as last week's Dynamite. Last week's Dynamite was just a bopper of a show. No MJF, no references, no mentions, no nothing, which is very interesting, but not too surprising based off of everything we've heard over the last week. But in the end, it ended very, very, very predictably. But with that, I do want to say thank you for joining me here. If you're watching live, twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited. If you watch, if you are watching later, then thank you for watching on youtube.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Unlimited or listening on podcast services all around the globe like YouTube, Spotify, Anchor, Google Pod, Apple Pod, and so much more. But if you are watching live right now on Twitch, then you can help us out a couple of different ways. You can either help us out by hitting that donate button down below or by donating Twitch bits in the live chat. Also remember, you can help us out by subscribing to the channel one of two different ways. You can either subscribe with a tiered subscription or you can subscribe with Amazon Prime for no extra cost. If you're already paying for Amazon Prime, then you take that Amazon Prime account, you take that Twitch account, you link them together, bada bing, bada boom, your Prime Gaming. And here's the other cool thing. It doesn't even have to be your Amazon Prime account. It can be anybody's Amazon Prime account, whether that's your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your grandma, your grandpa, your auntie, your uncle, anybody, anybody, anybody. And what do you get with Prime? What do you get with Prime Gaming? Well, you get free games. You get free stuff for games, and you always get one free subscription to any Twitch channel you want to subscribe to throughout the month. And I'd greatly appreciate it if you subscribed right here, Pro Wrestling Unlimited. But also, if you're watching on YouTube or you're just a follower or a subscriber on YouTube, remember to hit that join button down below to become a channel member. As a channel member, you get early access to news, early access podcast episodes, early access to non-news videos, and so much more. But also remember, the better way to do that, the better way to subscribe is... Well, patreon.com forward slash PW Unlimited. Head over to Patreon and you'll get everything right there in just right there, one concise area, and you will be directly supporting us here at Pro Wrestling Unlimited, unlike as a channel member on YouTube, where YouTube takes their cut and so forth. But we appreciate the support anyway. And one other way you can support us is by heading over to the Epic Game Store. Why is this still not wanting to load? Give me one second to try and fix this button really fast guys let's do something here i'm gonna go here 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 see if that works did that work don't know one to pop up for some reason i don't know why very very Oh, I'll try to fix that later. I had it working, and then it stopped working. Then I had it working, and it stopped working. But head over to the Epic Game Store. Head over to the Epic Game Store, whether you're buying a new game, buying an old game, or claiming a free game. It'll ask you if you have creator code, and you do your creator code is PW Unlimited. It doesn't cost you anything extra to put in the code, but it does support us. Also, trying to get in that new vibin' season of Fortnite? You want that crew pack? You need the battle pass? Well... Don't forget on the launch of Fortnite, whether that's on your PlayStation, your Xbox, your computer, your Switch, your phone, your tablet, anything. They'll ask you in the store, do you have a creator code? Go all the way down to the bottom of the store page. And put in the code PWUnlimited. You can also do that with Rocket League and coming up here shortly, Fall Guys. When that goes free to play and they ask you to pay for a battle pass and whatnot as well. But with that... We've got a lot to talk about when it pertains to tonight's AEW Dynamite. So let me delete this here. Let me delete that there. Close that there. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. So tonight's AEW Dynamite started off with a casino battle royale. Not just a regular battle royale, but a casino, which means five guys come in, 
And then we have four groups of five, and then the Joker. So the only ones that really got an entrance tonight were Darby and Eddie Kingston for this match. And the opening five were Eddie Kingston, Darby Allen, Daniel Garcia, Lance Archer, and Tony Nese. Now here's my thing. A lot of big notable names not in this match. I think AW is going to have, as Ricky Ricardo would say, got a little splaining to do. But as soon as the match bell rings, Kingston and Garcia go at each other as Nice, Allen, and Archer just sit and watch. Eventually, Allen baited Archer to the floor and took him out with his signature missile suicide dive. So Darby gets out of the ring under the bottom rope. They let us know that's not an elimination. Then Lance Archer kind of comes out after him through the ropes and this and that, and they traded nice shots. The next five in are Ricky Starks, Jake Hager, Ray Phoenix, Swerve Strickland, and Keith Lee. Interestingly, how Hager and Garcia didn't come in together, Starks and Hobbs didn't come in together, but every other faction that had multiple people came in together, like Swerve and, Swerve and Lee, like Caster and the Gun Club, like Fish and O'Reilly. Very weird. Very weird. <clears throat> but Smart Mark Sterling got involved as well at one point, trying to eliminate Swerve, but then Keith Lee eliminated Tony Nese. Lee also eliminated Archer. Next five in were John Silver, but it, it, it wasn't just John Silver. No, no, no. He can't be just John Silver on the graphic. And let me see if I, I saved that graphic. This is kind of... Eh. Let me see. Is this the right one? No. There it is. It can't just be John Silver or Johnny Hungy or whatever. No. They, they got to do this man a little dirty. Look at this on the graphic. It has to say Dark Orders John Silver. He can't just be John Silver. Well, I mean, it never just says and Dark Orders Anna J. But Dark Orders John Silver. Like, he can't just be John freaking Silver. Anyways. It was John Silver. I boys butch this name. Konoski Takeshka. Takeshida. Max Caster. Colton Gunn. And Austin Gunn. And this really kind of ticked me off. This whole thing is supposed to be a very serious battle royal. There is important stakes you could become the interim world champion if you win this match. But we got to have silliness from the acclaimed in the gun club. We have to have Max Caster do his rap. I wasn't too offended with Caster doing the rap. But then they had to do the stupid stuff of Colton and Austin saying the wrong name for the city. And then um, Anthony Bowens had to take the mic and go, no, and, uh, you know, like that's not taking this match serious. Then in the match, you got Caster... Austin and Colton doing the whole ah! in the middle of the ring. And I'm like, get these fucking blokes out of this match if they're not going to take it serious. You want a shot at the interim world championship? Take the fuck thing serious. Like that right there made me go, oh, yeah, this is just a fun battle royal. Whoever wins this battle royal, no offense, Kyle O'Reilly, he didn't win, didn't win, didn't win. Not winning, blah, blah, blah. We're not supposed to take the winner of this serious. We're us hoping we should. Final group comes out and it's Powerhouse Hobbs, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, Dante Martin, and the returning Wheeler Yuta, who just finished up the best of the Super Juniors tournament. They literally said, Wheeler Yuta got off the airplane from Japan five, four hours ago and came straight here to the building. Uh, Phoenix at one point eliminated Caster and Lee eliminated both members of the gun club. Swerve then swerved his partner and eliminated Keith Lee. I wonder if that's going to lead to anything. Lee was furious on the outside. We then finally get the Joker, the returning, I guess you could say, Andrade, El Idolo. Andrade, fresh off of his marriage, his wedding to Charlotte Flair and their honeymoon. Hobbs eliminated Silver. Kingston eliminated Garcia. Hager eliminated Kingston. And then Hager himself was eliminated by Wheeler Yuta. Hobbs and Starks eliminated Takeshita. And then Dante Martin, Phoenix, and eliminated Starks. Uh, Darby and Swerve worked together a little bit as Andrade, uh, against Andrade, but were cut off by Red Dragon. Ali recovered, or Allen recovered. I don't know why I saw, said Ali. Oh, I know why. I wrote that wrong. Okay. Allen recovered and eliminated Fish. 
but Swerve double-crossed Allen and eliminated him. Andrade then eliminated Swerve. Andrade and Phoenix had a great, and I mean great, back and forth here. Hobbs tried to eliminate Phoenix by just hoisting him up, putting him over the ropes, but it didn't happen. Yuta then basically drop kick powerhouse Hobbs. He flipped over the top rope over Phoenix. Phoenix grabbed the top rope and stayed eliminated, but not with his hands. Oh, no. Phoenix caught himself with his feet. Jeez. Final four in the match of Phoenix, Andrade, O'Reilly, Yuta. Kind of a strong final four, if I do say so. I was, I was sitting here going, all right, it's got to be Andrade. Got to be Andrade. We need to elevate Andrade. Andrade just felt like a guy in AEW. We need to elevate Andrade. Yuta and O'Reilly went back and forth as Phoenix got a flurry of offense on against Andrade, but Andrade low-blowed him out of midair and eliminated him. O'Reilly then eliminated Andrade, leaving O'Reilly and Yuta as the final two, and I go, oh, yeah, neither of these guys are beating Moxley, so just give us whoever. And it ain't going to be Yuta because they ain't doing Yuta versus Mox in the main event tonight. So, all right, Kyle O'Reilly wins. And that he does. He hits a dragon screw through the ropes and eliminates Wheeler Yuta. Got really predictable. Because, I mean, once Andrade was eliminated, we knew it wasn't going to be Wheeler Yuta. And once, no offense, Kyle O'Reilly won, I knew Moxley wasn't losing to Kyle O'Reilly. No bit. Not one bit at all. Moving forward, after the match, they cut to the back, and Moxley cuts a promo. Moxley says that the road ended here for O'Reilly. He would be going to Forbidden Door, and the end result would be three years in the making. The entire sport belongs to him. And I go, wait, what? Three years in the making? You've already been the world champion. Three years in the making for what, though? I, I, I didn't understand what that meant. I didn't understand what he meant by this was three years in the making. Forbidden Door was three years in the making? Or him becoming the champion was three years in the making? I think he meant Forbidden Door was three years in the making because he's been the world champion before for like a couple hundred days. So I think he just meant, you know, all roads go to Forbidden Door, which is three years in the making, and I'm going to take the main event there, and I'm going to win the world title. I think that's what he meant, but I was a little confused. The announcers then provided an update on CM Punk, stating that he had surgery today on his lower leg. Wouldn't say, okay, I don't know why they want you to say it's the foot. If it's the foot, he broke his foot. Okay. Also, Max Caster in his rap during the Battle Royal said that I'm going to break all you like I broke Punk's foot. So if it's the foot, why can't they tell us? Punk wouldn't say it on Rampage, and JR wouldn't say it here tonight. He just said Punk had successful surgery today on his lower leg. More information will come as we finally learn about his recovery and stuff going forward. And I'm just like, Max Caster said foot. Everyone's reporting foot. Just tell us it's the dang foot. I don't understand why they can't tell us it's the foot. Well, then AEW makes a big announcement. They have a new title coming in. The All-Atlantic Championship belt. Let me pull up some pictures of the belt here. We've got the All-Atlantic Championship belt. Belt right here. Just looks like another Lucha Underground ripoff belt, like the AEW Women's World Championship. Literally, looks like another Gift of the Gods title, just like the AEW Women's World title. Basically, it's their version of the Intercontinental Championship. There will be an eight-man tournament to crown the champion, with every man representing a different country-ish, except for, well, we don't know. So they said... You know, every man on the AEW side of this will be representing a different country. And then they said there'll be a New Japan match. But this is the belt. Let me give you some other shots of the belt. That's the belt live in the arena. Another belt from the video. Another shot from the video. And we're going to have, you know, qualifying matches to the finals. And the finals will be a fatal four-way. And they were like... Man, that's really unconventional to do a fatal four-way to crown the champion here or to, to have the champion or in a title. It was like, okay, unconventional. What do you mean unconventional for it to be a fatal four-way? But as far as who will be in this tournament and who can make the finals of this tournament, of course we had 
Pack and Buddy Matthews tonight, which Pack did win to advance. So Pack will be in the Fatal Four Way next week. Next week we have Ethan Page and Miro. Then we also have Penta Escuro and Malachi Black, and then a match from New Japan that will also fit one person into here. If I'm predicting, I would say Miro makes it in. Pen Malachi Black makes it in because we're not going to have Pac and Penta in the match. And then whoever from New Japan, we get as well. So that title match, the Fatal 4-Way, do crown the first ever All-Atlantic champion, will be on June 26th at the, the Forbidden Door pay-per-view. Why will this not close now? There we go. Um, Arm Week or Nick, I should say, reading his name in the chat. Nick says, I hope Ethan Page wins it. I was hoping Miro. Miro, the Redeemer. But I wouldn't be against Ethan Page being the first All-Atlantic champion. Then you would have Ethan Page being the, the All-Atlantic champion and Scorpio Sky is the TNT champion at the same time. I mean, I wouldn't hate that. Uh, Nick says, it would be cool if Buddy has to fight back, but I doubt it. Yeah, no. They said four-way. And it's just going to be straight up Fatal 4-Way. I don't see them adding a fifth person or doing any kind of like, all right, everybody, that would be a WWE way to do it. Everybody that lost now gets one. Well, no. AW's done that before, I think. Everybody that's lost now gets one last chance. But going forward, Pac did defeat Buddy Matthews to advance into the match at Forbidden Door for the title. They basically said that Pac was representing the United Kingdom as Matthews was representing Australia. Uh, the two men were evenly matched with power and speed early on. Pac sent Matthews to the outside with a running Hurricane Rana, then fainted on the Fosbury flop. During a commercial break, as we saw picture in picture, Pac sent Matthews over the timekeeper's table, but Matthews came back to drop Pac on the apron with a back suplex. Once back from the break, Pac spiked Matthews with a DDT. He was like wrapped up in the ropes. He did some sort of like spring mower wrap around him, but it dropped him head first, spiked him off the DDT. Really cool looking move. Matthews did eventually come back with a rising knee, but was met with a German suplex, followed by a lariat for a double down spot. Both men got back to their feet, but Pac struggled, and Matthews on top, on the top turnbuckle, hit a common geary. Matthews came back with, and planted Pac with a Liger bomb. For a two, Matthews went for a thrust kick in the ropes and Pack blocked it and hit a sick poison Rana in return. Pack then climbed the ropes and landed a black arrow to pick up the victory and advance into the next match here as far as at Forbidden Door. We then had all members of, you know, Death Triangle and um, House of Black come out and they com confronted everybody and everything. So that's why I think, you know, and we had, you know, Penta in the ring doing the whole thing like this to Malachi Black because they're going to face in the in a round, the first round or whatever. So I do think Penta's going to lose Malachi. Malachi. I mean, screw it. Give the belt to Malachi Black. Put the belt on Black. Eddie Kingston was backstage. And boy, was he outraged. This man, more than anybody, thinks pro wrestling's real. Calls out Jake Hager for costing him a shot at the AEW World Championship tonight before running down the rest of the Jericho Appreciation Society. He said, I want you, Hager, on Rampage this Friday. Trent Beretta then came out to the ring. He said he was bummed out because today it's supposed to be National Best Friends Day and his friends aren't here. Yet, I thought he was taken out of Best Friends because like two weeks ago, I think it was, on BTE, we literally saw a spot where Chuck Taylor had a best friend shirt, the one with the uh, faces on it, where like the, the drawing anime faces, and he cut Trent out of the damn shirt. Best friends still my ass. Anyways, he then says that they were screwed out of their shot for the ROH World, World Tag Team Championships, and they wanted another shot, so he calls out FTR. No Rocky here, though. Cash came down and said, yeah, I mean, you're justified in being upset, mad, but you can't be mad at us. We did nothing wrong. You need to be mad at them boys from New Japan that cost you the title. That cost you not just the title, but the match. Um, Dax said, you need to be mad at Will Ospreay and his, his boys. And now it would come well. 
Will Ospreay. Yep, Ospreay making his AEW debut. Ospreay comes out and he's jaw jacking, can't hear what he says. And then finally he goes like this. Tell them, turn around. And in the ring, Aaron Hanare and Ozzy Open. So FTR and Trent try to fight them off, but no go. Ozzy Open hit a double team finish on Trent. And then Osprey smashed him with the hidden blade. Undis uh, um, United Elite then uh, stand tall in the process. So cool. We know on Rampage, it's going to be... Where is it? It's going to be Will Ospreay and Ozzy Open against Trent Beretta and FTR. So that match will be happening, probably happening right now. It's being filmed tonight and will be airing this Friday. Kyle O'Reilly cut a promo in the back with the Undisputed Elite and William Regal was standing opposite. Regal said, O'Reilly, you're talented and I know firsthand because, well, I've actually taught you some stuff in our past. But John Moxley, he's a different kind of person. He's somebody that gives me the chills. You need to be ready and not underestimate John Moxley. Um, he said he's going to be on commentary and O'Reilly will get his head cracked open. O'Reilly said that he came to AEW to fight and now he wants to fight for the world title. Adam Cole then joined commentary as Hangman Page took on David Finley in a really good match. I, I enjoyed this match, Hangman and Finley. They wrestled around early on before someone you know, finally got the advantage, and that was Hangman. He was able to knock Finley down to the floor. He took out Finley with a nice tope suicida before taking a sip of beer at ringside. Finley finally came back with a chop block before the commercial break. Upon return... Um, upon return, Page started a comeback with a follow-away slam. He followed it up with a plancha to the floor. There was a suplex that got a two, and then Page wanted to go for the dead eye, but Finley countered into a backbreaker for a two. Page caught a crossbody, but Finley cradled Page for a two again. Page then flipped out of a German and level, almost landed on his head here. So Finley went for a German suplex. Page did the, the backflip out of it, almost knocked himself out, almost landed right on top of his head. And he, he leveled Finley with a clothesline before hitting the buckshot lariat to pick up the victory. After the match, Page said that there's a lot that he wants to say about the AEW World Championship, but it's not looking like he's going to get another shot anytime soon. Another guy that should have been in the goddamn Battle Royal. Why not? Page then said that he remembered that there's more than one World Championship in this world of professional wrestling. So a forbidden door, he... Wants a shot at the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. And he wants Kazuchika Okada. Adam Cole then came out on commentary. And pointed out that the champion may not be Okada. Once we get to Forbidden Door. That could be his friend Jay White. Dominion is Jay White challenging Okada for the belt. Jay White Okada matches are always so good. Always. Anyways. But unlike Paige. Cole's a champion. He won the Owen Hart Cup. And he thinks he deserves a shot at the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Well, not to knock you. Are you going to defend that belt? Like, is the plan to defend the Owen Hart belts? Because if so, then we didn't need this All-Atlantic belt. Because I thought last week on Dynamite, Excalibur made a reference to Britt Baker eventually having to defend her belt for winning the Owen. I could have heard that wrong, but... Just I don't know where they're going with them walking around with these belts. Are they going to be as insignificant as the FTW title and maybe be defended twice a year if that? I hope not. Because we don't need random ass people walking around with belts that don't matter. We already got, no offense, I love Ricky Starks, but we already got Ricky Starks doing that. I think Ricky Starks is fantastic. I think he's great. But the FTW title is nothing. And these Owen titles are probably nothing as well. Also, uh, Magma Lore says, was John ever in NXT? Technically, yeah. Technically, the Shield started in NXT. Early days of NXT, but technically, yes. He was in NXT before they were on the network when NXT was just aired on WWE.com. Better earlier today video where AW Women's World Champion Thunder Rosa, issued an op Thunder Rosa issued an open challenge to anyone in AEW. Marina Shafir was somehow standing right there and walked up. She said that she'd like to be Rosa's problem. She wondered if Rosa could solve her. 
and I go, hold the fucking phone. This chick lost to Jade Cargill for the TBS title just a few weeks ago. When was that? Marina Shafir. Like, she just lost to freaking Jade in a title match. She lost that match on May 1st. No. April 20th. Less than two months ago, she was in a title match. And then what, what signifies that she deserves this? Oh, she's barely ranked in the top five. Because she won two matches against Le uh, Lena Lennox and Sky Blue on Dark that nobody watches? No. We did not need Marina Shafir in this match fighting for the AW Women's World Championship after she just lost less than two months ago to Jade for the TBS title. And I'm going to say it right now. I'll say it before I review the match. This match fucking sucked. I don't need to see Marina Shafir in title matches because she ain't ready. She ain't horrible, but she ain't good. But then got a Wardlow video or a Wardlow interview. Wardlow basically said, huh. I'm a mid-card jobber guy. Well, not jobber guy, but I'm a mid-carder, and that's all I need to be. That's literally what this fuck said. I don't need to be in the Battle Royal for the world title shot. Uh-uh. I want the TNT title instead, because I want to fight Punk later. Really? Really? This was god-awful. So Tony Schiavone brings out Wardlow, who said, Welcome to Wardlow's world. And I'm like, oh, God, he's a gimmick. He's a total big-ass gimmick. Wardlow said that he asked to not be in the Casino Battle Royale earlier tonight because, well, he wants to face CM Punk. And CM Punk's ready to go in the champion. So, if he's not beating Punk, he says, I don't deserve the title yet. And I go, excuse me? Excuse me. You don't deserve the title yet. You don't. So, so are you saying that the... Did Wardlow literally come out here and try to tell us that the interim championship is bullshit? Wardlow literally came out and said, this interim belt's bullshit. I want the real thing. And since Punk ain't here to give me a real title match, eh, I'll do the next best thing and take on Scorpio Sky for the TNT title. Jesus! Fucking just tell us that the interim belt doesn't mean anything. Oh, wait, you did. You did tell us that the interim belt doesn't mean crap. So he said that um, there is a title that he wants to go after, one that has prestige, but that has been diminished recently. He wants the TNT title. Corbo Sky would walk out, title in hand. Ethan Page and Dan Lambert ran out to talk him down as well. Scorpio's injured. Wardlow said that he'd wait until Sky is healthy. Everybody getting fucking hurt in this company. Adam Cole's hurt. Samoa Joe's hurt. Um, Scorpio Sky's hurt. Daniel Bra Brian Danielson's got a gnarly concussion, apparently. Like, Jesus. Everybody's freaking getting hurt. Backstage, all of a sudden, we get smart Mark Sterling and the AEW security. He's giving Wardlow two options. He can face Wardlow in court, or he can wrestle 20 security members at once next week in an elimination match. And I'm just like, oh my God. Wardlow was supposed to get this big push after the MJF stuff. And A, he's relegated himself to the TNT title, stating that, oh, the interim belt's bullshit, so um, I'll just take whatever's left. I'll be a mid-carder. And now this Mark Sterling stuff is dumb as shit. Who's supposed to take Wardlow serious right now? Nobody. And they got a Young Bucks video. Young Bucks were in their dressing room or whatever. They were going to address, well, they did sort of start to address the Lucha Bros. No, Jurassic Express. I don't know why I wrote Lucha Bros. Jurassic Express. They said, we pinned you guys, so uh, we want our belts back. We want a title shot. You get a knock at the door. Then the door just opens. They're like, Brandon, that door is supposed to be locked. And then come the Hardys. Hardys pointed out, you think you deserve a title shot? Well, we beat you at double or nothing. Maybe we should be ahead of you. And then comes Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, and Christian Cage. Christian goes, hey, hey, you all got a claim. You all got a gripe about why you should be challenging for the titles. So how about next week? We do, and he looks at Matt and Jeff and go, what we made famous with tag titles. 
Jurassic Express defends against both the Hardys and the Young Bucks in a ladder match. And Jungle Boy's sitting next to, or standing next to Christian going, excuse me, what? Christian, what are we talking about? And Christian's like, we'll see you next week. And he goes to walk off. And Jungle Boy's kind of just like, what are you talking? We're doing what? what? Huh? No, I don't. And Christian just leaves. Jungle Boy's like not wanting to do this. He's like, I didn't sign up for this. Why are you making me do that? Like, we're getting Jungle Boy versus Christian eventually. We're eventually going to get the whole Jungle Boy's fed up with Christian kind of thing. Or Jungle Boy eventually fails at some sort to where Christian finally goes, yeah, you're a loser. I don't like you. Da, 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 da. But something, yeah. Jungle Boy did not, not, not seem happy with Christian here just making this match. And fucking... Christian, who gave him authority to make a match? Oh, yeah. Anybody in AEW can just make matches, apparently. Next up, we have the match that I already told you guys sucked. Thunder Rosa versus Marina Shafir. This match was so bad, the crowd was dead for about 98% of it. I mean, they were even dead for the post-match. They performed some back and forth chain wrestling early on that didn't really look that good. Shafir gained the advantage with a snap suplex. And it looked like, oh, this was rough. So, Marina Shafir tried to go for the suplex. And she starts to get Thunder Rosa up. And then she gets to drop her down because Thunder Rosa, I don't know if Thunder Rosa tried to like block it or wouldn't go up, but she tries to get her up, right? And she's like, whoa. And immediately just uh, herks her up. Like, so you can see, Marina uses all of her strength to go. Hey, you're fucking going over. And she's like, and barely gets Thunder Rosa over for this suplex. Like either A, Marina messed up the first time and just tried to quickly do it without gaining her composure. Or B, Thunder Rosa didn't want to go over. And Marina said, screw you. I'm making you go over. This did not look good. This suplex looked a little rough. We actually go to commercial break. Once back, Rosa fired up with some knees and a th Northern Lights suplex. Got a two off of it. There's a Death Valley driver from Rosa that got a two again. Shafir caught a kick and lifted Rosa up, but Rosa turned it into a cradle for a two. Then cradled her again and picked up the victory. Under Rosa retains the AEW World Championship in a meaningless match. It was all about the post-match. Under Rosa's uh, celebrating with her belt when Marina Shafir attacks her from behind. Marina then goes to put her in some weird-ass submission hold, and out would come Tony Storm, to make the save. Tony Storm took down uh, Marina. Thunder Rosa then hit her with the Thunder Fire Driver. Or the Fire Thunder Driver. I always mix that up. And then Thunder Rosa's on her knees. Storm grabs the belt. Looks at the belt. And then hands it over to Thunder Rosa. And commentary questions. Oh, is Tony Storm wanting to go for the title? Is Tony Storm next in line? Does she want a shot at Thunder Rosa in the belt? Well, yeah. Most likely. Duh. And then send it to the back where there's Jade Cargill, Stokely Hathaway, and the baddies. Basically, they made fun of Statlander for once being an alien. And Stokely Hathaway says her name wrong. And then they said that Red Velvet will be taking on Chris Statlander on Rampage. Which, we got the Rampage lineup right here. Red Velvet versus Chris Statlander. Will Ospreay and Aussie Open against Trent Beretta and FTR. Satnam Singh will make his AEW in-ring debut when he teams with Jay Lethal. Eddie Kingston will take on Daniel Garcia. And we'll also hear from Hook and Dan Housen. As far as next week's AEW Dynamite does go, it's Road Ranger from, I want to say, St. Louis. We got an All-Atlantic Championship qualifier, Ethan Page from Canada against Miro from Bulgaria. 20-on-1 handicap match, Wardlow versus The Plaintiffs. A hair versus hair match, Chris Jericho versus Ortiz, which no Jericho tonight to build up that hair versus hair match, which was kind of odd. You're just going to tell us, oh, by the way, the hair versus hair match is still a thing next week. But no Ortiz and no Jericho either. Either, like, I thought at least one should be on here to hype that up, but no, very weird. And the AEW World Tag Team Championships will be on the line in the triangle ladder match, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus against the Young Bucks and the Hardys. William Regal then joined commentary for our next match. It was the number one contender eliminator interim world championship match. Match was really, really good, but it was like, I know who's winning. Just fucking just say Moxley's in the damn match at Forbidden Door. I know people are going to say, I thought Kyle O'Reilly was winning, but I don't think anybody in their right mind 
thought Kyle O'Reilly was going to beat fucking John Moxley tonight. So Moxley controlled the early portions of this match with some joint manipulation. He traded strikes in the center of the ring, and O'Reilly caught Moxley's leg over the ropes and hit a dragon screw, just like he did in the Battle Royal. He then landed a diving knee. This did not look that good because it was the whole, it was the old Andrade double, well, no, not Andrade. Andrade did this a little bit in WWE, but Alberto Del Rio did this a lot in WWE, where he'd lay somebody on the ropes and they'd have to just hang there forever until he can climb to the top, get his footing, and then jump off for the double foot stomp. And this is what happened here. Moxley hanging on the ropes. At least Moxley was like struggling, trying to get off, unlike some people that usually just lay there. And then O'Reilly took his sweet ass time to get to the top rope and jump off with a knee to Moxley. And then go to commercial break. Once back, Moxley hit a super butterfly suplex to make a comeback. He fired up with some more strikes and locked on a cross-faced chicken wing. Moxley was then bleeding from the nose at this point. He landed a King Kong lariat and got a near fall off of it. Moxley laid in some hammer throws and an anvil elbow. O'Reilly came back with a cross-faced strike and an elbow of his own. Moxley turned the tables here with more strikes. O'Reilly fired back, but Moxley hit a jumping cutter. He went for the gotch-style pile driver, and O'Reilly reversed it into a triangle sleeper before locking on a heel hook. There was a strong right hand from Moxley that broke, excuse me, that broke the hold. On a second attempt, Moxley was able to hit the gotch-style pile driver, but only got a two off of it. They then traded open hand palm strikes, and O'Reilly hit a Saito suplex but Moxley came right back with one of his own. Basically, no sold O'Reilly's. They then smashed each other repeatedly with lariats. Moxley locked on a sleeper before transitioning it into a bulldog choke. Moxley then hit the regal knee and the paradigm shift to pick up the victory. They then tell us John Moxley has now qualified for the, uh, for the interim championship match at Forbidden Door coming up on June 26th. We'll see you next week, AEW Dynamite. It goes off the air pretty quickly right there at the top of the hour. So with that, that was AEW Dynamite. It was one of those shows that went, kind of like had its really good opener. Like the Battle Royale was fun. I had some gripes about it with it not being taken as seriously as it should have, but it was pretty good. Then the show kind of leveled off. Then it dipped for all that woman stuff that wasn't good. And I'm not, you know, the woman's match, the woman's title match was just not good. Then it came back up for that main event that was really, really good. But with that, that's what I thought of tonight's AEW Dynamite. Now I want to know what you guys thought of the show. Remember, you can let me know by texting into 510-906-1341. Again, that's 510-906-1341. But first, let's check the polls. As far as the Twitch poll does go, 75% liked tonight's Dynamite. 13% thought it was just all right. And 13% did not like the show. As far as the Twitter poll does go, 57% liked the show, 31% thought it was just all right, and 10% did not like Dynamite. And as far as the YouTube community poll does go, let's see, 59% liked the show, 32% thought it was just all right, and 9% did not like Dynamite. As far as the text messages here, let's pull those up right now. Why will you not come? There we go. Got a couple. First says, you see Chris Statlander challenging and winning the TBS championship. Challenging after Athena, yes. Winning it, probably not. I just don't see anybody who beats Jade. I mean, yeah, I just don't see who beats Jade, which is not a good thing. I mean, it is for Jade and her character, but if you can't see... Anywhere down the road that she's going to lose that belt. I don't know. I don't know. There's there's nobody that I feel in that women's division. Honestly, there's nobody I feel in that women's division other than Tony Storm, who should beat Thunder Rosa. And I don't see anybody, maybe Britt Baker, who should beat Jade. But I don't know. And then here you go. This person says, you think Tony Storm is the next AEW Women's World Champion? I think so. I think... I know they're going to do the whole, oh, we don't want Thunder Rosa to have a, a short title reign. We do long title reigns here. But I, I think Tony Storm needs to have that strap. Put the strap on Tony Storm. Chris says, hey, Tim, I thought AEW fans were asking for trios belts, not a transatlantic belt. Also, did Buddy ever face pack in WWE? I don't remember. Probably. I wouldn't put it. I wouldn't say they. Let's see. 
Buddy Murphy versus Neville. Maybe not. I'm not finding anything. No. Maybe not. I don't think so, actually. I think this is the first time they've ever worked singles together. And as far as... So, I can confirm. Trio's belts have been made. Why they haven't debuted them? I don't know. Last time Tony Khan was asked about trios belts, he said, maybe we'll wait till Moxley or Omega's back for that. What makes me think like that maybe they put Omega and the Bucks as the first trios champions. And since Omega's not around, they can't do that if that's what they want to go with as far as um, the elite being the, the tag team the trios champions, Moxley and, or not Moxley, Omega and the Young Bucks. Because That's what it really sounded like. When Tony was asked about trios titles, he's like, oh, yeah, we have those in mind, but um, we want to do a tournament for those. And maybe we wait for Omega to come back, which is like telling us Omega's going to win the title, so we can't do it yet. But with that, that's everything we got here for tonight's AEW Dynamite review. Now, here's a little programming note. Friday morning, I will be doing the wrestling wrap-up, probably a little earlier than normal. But Friday evening, there will not be a SmackDown review. I will be out of town. We're going camping this weekend. Bam, bam. We're going camping, so I will not be home. But if any news does come out of SmackDown, I will make a video of it and put it up on the channel. And so that way you guys are kept up to date with all the different news. So again, if we do hear anything coming out of SmackDown, I will make a video. I will report on it, but I will not be home all weekend. I'll be out of town. We're going camping. Going camping on the lake. We're taking the jet skis. Should be really, really fun. But with that, guys, I'll see you Friday morning for the wrestling wrap-up. Have a good one.